Hi everyone, today we will learn about Newton's third law of motion. So um, our objective for today, number one, is to describe the third law of motion. Second is to identify different examples of activities or phenomena that uses third law of motion. Okay, so the idea that I want you to focus on and I want you to remember is for every force, there is an equal and opposite force. Before we proceed to the third law of motion, let's have first a quick review on forces and then how it relates to interactions. So a force is always part of a mutual action. So meaning every time there is a force, the thing that happens is it actually interacts with other forces as well. So it's a part of a mutual action that involves another force. So there's always a pair of forces. When one force is acting on it, there's always another force um, behind it. So that's why there is an interaction between them. From our lessons previously, you've learned also that in the simplest sense, a force is a push or pull. So a mutual action happens when there is an interaction between one thing and another. So especially if two objects are involved and then you apply the force into it, um, what happens is it will interact back to you. So for example, when you push a wall, pushing a wall involves two objects, person and the wall. When you push a wall, what happens actually is the wall pushes on you. So as you can see that there is an interaction between the person and the wall. The person is pushing towards the wall in this scenario, going to the right. But what we don't really know is that the wall is actually applying a force towards us. So when you exert a force on the wall, the wall will also exert a force on you. Another example is the hammer and the nail. The interaction that drives the nail is the same as the one that halts the, ha the hammer. So there's two interactions here. One force is going downwards, that's the force of the hammer, and one force is going upward, that's the force of the nail. Uh, when these two interacts with each other, um, that is the reason why the nail will be on the board or will be on the wood because of the two forces interacting with each other. So to have more explanation, a hammer exerts a force on the nail and drives it into a board. So there must also be a force exerted on the hammer to halt in the process. So Isaac Newton reasoned that while the hammer exerts a force on the nail, what happens is the nail will also exert a force on the, um, the hammer. So what you can say is that every time it's a force applied in an object, there's always a reaction to it. And that object will also apply a force on the other object. So there's always an opposite reaction. So in the, in the interaction, there are a pair of forces. One will act on the nail and the other act on the hammer, like what I've shown you earlier. So there's two forces interacting with each other. So now, why do forces always occur in pairs? So this is where your um, third law of motion came in. So I want you to take note. Newton's third law states that Whenever one object exerts a force on a second object, what will the second object do? The second object will also exert an equal and opposite force to the first object. So it's quite similar to um, the golden rule. Do unto others what you want others do unto you. So if you apply a force to the other object, the other object will also apply a force on you. So with that, there is an interaction between forces. So that's why your Newton's third law is also known as law of interaction. So when you apply a force to one object, that object will also apply a force on you. Like when you apply a push to the wall, the wall will also push you back. So that is your third law of motion. In Newton's third law, it describes the relationship between two forces in an interaction. So meaning, uh, when we're dealing with third law, there's always a pair of force, and they interact with each other. One force is called action force, while the other force is called the reaction force. So when I push the wall, I am giving action force, and then the wall will be giving a reaction force. So that's why sometimes they would call the third law of motion as law of action reaction because of the two forces present on it. So neither forces exist without the other. So they always go together. They are equal in strength 
but opposite in directions. They occur at the same time simultaneously, and they always act on different objects. So for example, if you push the wall, you are actually object A. Let's say you push the wall, and the force that you applied is 10 newtons. Based on the third law of motion, if you apply a force to the object, that object will also exert a force on you, meaning this wall will also exert an opposite force. But how much force will the wall exert? In the scenario that we have, the force is acting on different objects, so we cannot cancel it out. So meaning the force that the wall will apply is also 10 Newton, because based on Third law of motion, your action force will give you an equal and opposite reaction force. So opposite direction, but equal in strength or magnitude. So I want to make clear with you that the zero will happen if two forces are applied in one object. With that, Newton's third law is often stated, to every action, there is always an equal opposing reaction. So if like you push the wall and you give a 10 Newton of force, then the wall will give back the same amount, 10 Newton of force, but then the direction is opposite to each other. It doesn't matter which force we call action and which one we call reaction. But of course, most of the time, the cause is like your action and then the response is your reaction. So in Newton's third law, in every interaction, the forces always occur in pairs. One is action and one is reaction. So let's say, for example, if your action is you push against the floor, your reaction here would be the floor simultaneously push against the, against you. So this is your reaction. So your action is you push against the floor. How would the floor react? The floor will also push against you. So that is your action reaction. For the second one, the tires of a car interact with the road to produce car's motion. So there's an interaction there. Now, from this statement, the tire push against the road and the road pushes back on the tires. Can you underline the action force. Okay, so your action force actually is the starting force. So the tire push against the road is your action force. And of course, your reaction force would be the road simultaneously pushes back on tire. So your reaction is just the opposite of the action. So let's try this last one. When swimming, you push the water backward and the water pushes you forward. Underline the, the action force. and circle the reaction force. Your action force is you push the water backward. That's your action force. And what will the water do? The water will react. The water pushes you forward. That is your reaction force. So the interaction sometimes depends also on other factors, um, like other forces present. So for example, if a friction is present, like when a person trying to walk on ice where friction is very minimal, it you may not be able to exert an action force against the ice without the action force. There cannot be a reaction force and thus there is no resulting forward motion. So if friction is minimal or if there is no friction at all, we cannot be able to see the pair of forces like action and reaction. So for friction can affect it. So this is another scenario of a third law of motion. So this is one example. When the girl jumps to shore, the boat moves backward. Can you draw an arrow for the direction of the force of the girl in which direction the girl is going? How about the boat? What force the boat is going? Okay, so the girl is going to the right, but the boat is going to the left. So this tells us that this is third law of motion because they are in opposite direction. When the girl applied a force, 
it interacts with the boat, but in opposite direction. The girl is going to the right, the boat is going to the left. But the forces present in them is actually equal. So if the girl applies, let's say, 20 Newton of force, the boat will also have 20 Newton of force, but their direction is opposite. That's why it says to every action, there is an equal but opposing reaction. So the direction is opposite, but the magnitude or the strength of the force is the same. Another example of Newton's third law, the dog wags the tail, the tail wags the dog. So what happens? Question, concept check before we move forward. I want you to write your answer on the chat. So what happens when an object exerts a force on another object? What will the other object do? They will apply the same force and or they will pull other object. So they will still be able to apply the same force. So if the first object exerts a force on another object, the other object will also exert a force to the, uh, the first object. So to identify action and reaction, you did it earlier already, but just to make sure, to identify a pair of action-reaction forces, first identify the interacting objects. So sometimes we use letters A and B for the object, object A and object B. So if the action is A on B, the reaction would, would always be B on A. So there is a simple recipe for treating action and reaction forces. First, you identify the interaction. Let's say one object A interacts with another object, which is B. The action, of re the action and reaction forces are stated in the form. Your action would be object A exerts a force on object B. Reaction, object B exerts a force on object A. So just the opposite. But sometimes the identity of the pair of action and reaction forces is in an interaction is not obvious, especially if two objects have different mass. For example, what are the action and reaction forces in the case of a falling boulder? Falling boulder will have a lower mass as compared to the earth. If we call the action as earth exerting a force on the boulder, then the reaction is the boulder simultaneously exerting a force on earth. You wouldn't see, though, that the boulder is reacting with the earth because the mass of the boulder is heavy. But the amount of force that they have is actually equal to each other. Other examples that we have here, again, when action A exerts force on B, then B exerts force on A. So, for example, if the action is tire pushes the road, what will happen for the reaction? It's going right. And your reaction here would be... So your reaction here is just the opposite. What will the road do? So road pushes <clears throat> tire. Okay. Tire pushes road is your action force. So what will the road do? The road will interact in the same manner. So the road pushes tire. What is the reaction force here? For when you when when the ball Earth pulls ball in Leaning Tower of Pisa. And here, what is the reaction also? So ball pulls just the opposite. <clears throat> Should be earth here. So ball pulls the earth. Gas. Okay, gas pushes, so just the opposite. Gas pushes rockets, okay. Meaning the other object will do the same thing to the first object. That's what you need to remember. Okay, so here it is, but you did it right. Action, tire pushes road, reaction, road pushes tire. For the second one, your action, earth pulls ball, reaction, ball pulls earth. For the racket, racket pushes gas, reaction, gas pushes racket. So we know that earth pulls on the moon also. Does the moon also pulls on earth? If so, so which pull is stronger? So the answer is asking which pull is stronger is like asking which distance is greater between New York and San Francisco or between San Francisco and New York. The distance either way are the same. They are the same. It's the same with force pairs. Both air and moon pull on each other with equal and opposite forces, but we don't feel it 
because of their different masses. Okay, but the force applied is equal and the direction is opposite to each other. That's one thing that you have to remember. Okay, so this is how the moon and earth, um, what ha what's happening with the moon and earth. A given force exerted on a small mass produces a greater acceleration than the same force exerted on a larger mass. So that's it. You have to consider the, the mass of the objects. Another example is when a cannon is fired, there is an interaction between the cannon and the cannonball. The force the cannon exerts on the cannonball is exactly equal and opposite to the force the cannonball exerts on the cannon. You might expect the cannon to kick more than it does, but the cannonball moves so fast compared with the cannon because of its mass. Because according to Newton's second law, we must consider the masses. So here, the cannon go, cannonball will undergo more acceleration than the cannon because its mass is smaller. Even if the force is equal, let's say the force here is 15 Newton, the force on the other side is also 15 Newton, but your cannon will not move far away because it's too heavy. And, but your ball here, it will move too far because it has a lighter mass. That's why they use that mechanism in third law of motion. They use a small cannonball instead of a big cannonball in order to make sure that it will accelerate and travel in a farther distance. All right, so to summarize, Newton's third law states, every action force creates a reaction force that is equal in strength and opposite in direction. Or we can say to every action, there is, an all, there is always an equal and opposite reaction. Then there can never be a single force alone without its action-reaction partner. That's why the third law sometimes is called law of interaction or law of action-reaction because of the pair of force. Both are always present whenever any force appears. They, are, they always have the exact same strength. They always act in opposite direction. They always act on different objects. Remember that. So one force is on the other object and then one force is on the other object. Then both are real forces and can cause changes in motion. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.